I think, guys, I effed up. <laughs> um, dang it. My mic was muted. Gah. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's go over that again. <laughs> Shoot. Um, you know what date it is. Uh, won't, well, well, I'll probably be here maybe a little bit in the morning, even though it's a holiday and uh, regular markets are closed. Um, let me go over these trades again. Oh, I really got to check to make sure I don't have that muted. I'm sorry, guys. I At least I think it was muted. Um, dang. Well, let's look at what we were going over. Okay, quick review of the trades. Um, do -do 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 -do. Oh, Litecoin caught a bid right on that fib. Want to go over to, uh... well, I mean, if you took the trades yesterday over, over this week, you know you probably made a lot of money. The MAM account, um, I think we are going to probably be in the, uh, I just did a video yesterday for the MAM account, and um, if uh, you are interested in it, uh, I trade it. And we are, okay, how can I show it without actually giving out any information? I think. Uh, I guess that works. Okay, so we, oh, this, this, we started this back on, I believe the fourth of this month, maybe, maybe, or is this just our second week? I don't know, but we've had um, you know a number of participants, and uh, who, you know I mean, not really showing anything bad here. Um, the um, uh, we've got. This is how many people have this is how much has been deposited by various customers and then this is the total profit and loss that we've had over this week so um you know what is that in a percentage 20 percent i don't know that's the kind of that is not the kind of growth that you should be expect past performance this is why people say why i say Past performance is not indicative of future results, but I feel like I'm a pretty good trader and um, that um, I can certainly grow this account and, 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 and folks' accounts here. And, um, you know, the current trades that we have on right now, um, you know, even when I was talking to you guys about the pound dollar, if you look here on the dates, took those trades on the 16th, you know, at various points over the last week, you know, these three open trades in the pound, look at the swap, we've had them for a while. Um, these three trades, they have um, varied between minus 1,000 and minus 1,500. And, you know, we've actually been down on paper 11,000 at one point. Or 12,000, I don't know. But the point is, is that you don't get... Um, you don't get freaked out just because you're, you took a trade that you knew was the right one to take. And just because it whipsaws against you a large amount doesn't mean you're wrong. The only way that those end up being losses is if you leave because there are other trades that were on there that have already closed that were in the red. You know, I think for most people it would have looked pretty significant, but... Um, um, for me, I mean, it's just like another, it's like another trade and you just have to, you have to get used to seeing a lot of red in your account for a while and you have to manage the amount of money that you're risking because you don't want to get the name of it. I don't know if, if it's like risk management's the right word for it or, or what, but, um, you need to have some powder dry that's i don't know where that saying originated but you, you know you need to have some powder dry you need to have some 
um, you know, ability to, to be flexible within a trade. Okay. Like, uh, I mean, I guess I don't talk about this stuff enough, but you know, let's say we want to take a trade on UJ down, like we put in a trade to take on, on the, on the dollar yen. And, you know, let's say taking a, a 10th of a lot, so 10,000, let's say a 10th of a lot is a lot of your account balance. Well, there's other opportunities to go enter long here because this is a good signal. Um, this is a good entry area that we took, but what if it falls down, okay? What if it falls down in price and there's actually another buying opportunity? Um, well, if all of your money is exposed up here, you're missing another opportunity. So don't ever put so much. If What, I, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is that don't limit your entries to, to the entire exposure of your account. You should be able to have enough money lying on the sidelines to, to, to re-enter when more buying opportunities prevent, present themselves or to add to positions, you know, you want to be able to uh, uh, be, to ride off the storms and then, and then add back in when you can, okay? I always like to tranche my orders, okay? This is where I like to get in early. I like to get in a guaranteed fill, okay? I hate missing trades. I hate missing trades. I don't mind if I miss a trade down here or down here, but as long as I got back in up here, that's cool. But I would hate to miss the entire opportunity for this pullback from here to here, just because I was waiting for down here. Don't like that. So, you know, that's why I put in UJ that there are three trades to take that we took, you know, right now, uh, uh, like uh, 20 minutes ago. And then, you know, there's another opportunity if it gets down here or down here, or if we get back to the baseline. So we have all those opportunities and and uh, uh, um, um, zones ahead of us. So don't put all of your money into one trade or multiple trades. Have some left over on the sidelines. Try to keep like 50% of, of what you would normally be risking in trades. Leave it there on the side so that you can have some to re-enter in. All right. Now... Take a quick peek at gold. I was taking a look at gold. If any of you have been with us for the last few months is what I was saying, that this structure has held up beautifully. It has not changed. We haven't done anything with changing this GAN square, all these angles here, and we can see how, how, how effective it has been and how much it's been respected. Um, why don't I add the... Do, 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 do. We love the Ichimoku system. It's so nice. So Ichimoku system here. Um, dang, you know what? We just, this is why I get upset because I don't like missing these kind of trades. <laughs> Shoot. I don't get upset by losses. I get upset when I miss opportunities. Those those hurt. Um, the Euro Pound, we probably... Could be looking at another short entry. I think it may have passed us, um, but we'll we'll hang on. I'm, I might put in a, a an alert. Dollar yen. That pullback trade was still good. Working the pound dollar. Um, <clears throat> it's working. We're looking for a break here. Actually, there's another. At a break and hold below pretty much 140. Okay. And then uh, New Zealand dollar. You know about this trade. Ooh, you know what? Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. It's short. Yeah. Short. Uh, da, 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 da. Oops. 
shorting this guy. Why? We pulled back to the conversion line, crossed above, couldn't hold above it to test higher, rejected at the zone, came back down. We are below the conversion line and we are below this angle. So it looks like we may break this angle. And again, what is the, what is the rule of angles? Is that when an angle breaks, it will move to test the next one. And, and th this is the low risk trade um, right here. This is a, you know, our, our risk is certainly pretty much up at, um, uh, our risk is, is just kind of above us here at 72.17. Yeah, 72.17. That's where we're looking at the risk. Because if we look on our composite index here, um, we're not in oversold conditions anymore on the R side, and we are in a supportive buying zone or a selling zone based on our composite index. So we may get a pullback here. We'll see. Um, but for right now, this is a supportive, a supportive selling zone. Aussie dollar. Looking at the structure, it is in a strong support area. It's going to be difficult to break below here. Um, We'll have to see how this guy plays out. It'll be an interesting one to watch. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Euro dollar. Um, Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot of oomph there. I tell you what, though, this dollar yen yesterday, that was just beautiful. This is why we were adding to these positions down below. That's why we were, um, you know, hanging on. And, and you know, again, if we look at this on the... Um, we want to look at this on the weekly. That is a gorgeous candlestick. Look at these levels. We've been in these oversold conditions for a while. We've got this bullish divergence on the weekly and we have this massive engulfing candle i wish the volume was higher i really do but i and i think there's going to be some um i think we're going to experience some uh short uh we, we experienced a lot of short squeezes yesterday some people getting stopped out and i think we could probably even push that higher uh, depending how we close today and, and really how it closes on Friday is going to determine, you know, how much of a move we're going to get on Monday. Um, I think we're going to get a big one. Definitely. Uh, you know, you think about it, we are, um, we are right on a, a uh, full moon area so we can definitely say that we moved early before the full moon which is perfectly fine <clears throat> and that's what we kind of like to see because now we are we could really just be setting up a launch pad for big 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 time movements and um, yeah you know uh, this has been a fantastic trade week we've actually had a really pretty good year so far we, we are, we're ending our first quarter and um, you know, with the uh, MAM account, I don't even know if I got through that stuff with you all, <laughs> if that came out. Um, but the the MAM account is doing uh, 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 really great. And, um, you know, we should see some really nice gains continuing on into the year. So, um, sorry about the, <laughs> the, the, oops on my part but the trades that we have set up are are in there and um we should have a good you know if you if you are well into profit for the week you know this day is going to be like a friday uh i said at the beginning that that 
you know, treat today kind of like a Friday because tomorrow is Good Friday and, and there's not a lot of uh, trade activity that goes on in that day. Um, regular markets are closed. So, um, you know, made profit, t you know, take it off the table and uh, just call it a good week because it has been a fantastic, fantastic week. And um, treat yourself nice. Anyways, um, I'll, I, I may or may not be here tomorrow. I'm, I'm not sure. That's kind of that's kind of up to my wife. So, um, please take care of yourselves over the weekend. Have a good Friday tomorrow, and have a happy Easter. And let's uh, we've ended this quarter on a really really good note. And I think we're gonna be stepping into the next one on a fantastic and even better note. And we are going to do just. Uh, marvelously continuing forward all right um, I hope you all have a, a great great uh, weekend and we will talk to you either tomorrow or on Monday bye bye